Sundrench McDermott Park hoping to witness their team's SPL survival match. They were eventually seated in three out of the four stands but were stunned into silence just five minutes into the game when St Johnston's 17-year-old fullback David McLoon did his best to upset the party with a stunning lob into the top corner. The ball takes a slight deflection to confuse the keeper, but a quality goal from one of Saints' large band of promising youngsters. Sandy Clark's side looked comfortably in charge of the first half, but Darren Dodds was penalised for his challenge on Charlie Miller, and United were handed a lifeline in the shape of a penalty kick. Miller has been deadly from the spot most of the season, but the pressure of the occasion got the better of the former Rangers midfielder, and despite sending Main the wrong way, he fired past. And it was to get infinitely worse for United. Momo Silla setting up Paul Hartley in the 40th minute, and Saints go 2-0 up. Hartley booked for his celebration, but a clinical finish nonetheless. Into the second half then, and Hartley's yellow card to prove costly for St Johnston, after he scythed down Charlie Miller with a really nasty challenge. The second yellow, and a subsequent red followed, the dismissal to turn the game for the home side. At half-time rollicking from Alex Smith kicked life into United, who demonstrated the proverbial game of two halves theory with an inspired second half performance. Derek Lilly swept in from the corner, Charlie Miller made up for his penalty blunder with a well-placed diving header. 2-1. And from then on it was one-way traffic. Derek Lilly determined to get on the score sheet, his long-range effort not too far away. Charlie Miller was next up for a crack at the St Johnston goal, but Alan Main's positional awareness was superb. With the knowledge that St Mirren were beating Aberdeen at Love Street, the United players were going for it big style. Derek Lilly once again denied by the keeper. But it was only a matter of time before Alex Smith's side got the break they merited. Charlie Miller flighted in the perfect ball to Craig Easton, who took full advantage of St Johnston's sloppy defending. 2-2. Miller delivering the inch perfect ball, Easton unmarked and accurate with the header. The atmosphere at this point was electric, the magnificent United support sensing that something quite special was on the horizon. As it was, they had to endure a nervy goal mouse Jamash, the Saints' defence completely rattled, Derek Lilly once again having the final goal. And with just two minutes remaining, United managed to create the goal that would break Hearts and Paisley. Jamie McCunney crosses into the danger area, Derek Lilly finally getting the goal he deserved. 3-2, the party well and truly on for United. Good-natured mayhem and madness trackside after an arresting afternoon for the Tangerines. While this goal will not be the best Derek Willey will ever score, it will certainly rate highly in the most important list. Referee Alan Freeland brought a dramatic 90 minutes to a close and the celebrations really kicked off. The relief of survival overwhelming the United fans who decided McDermott Park was to become the best dance floor in Tayside. They chanted for their heroes to come back out a full 30 minutes after the game had finished, but when the team failed to reappear, one young supporter made a bid for freedom and entertained the crowd with a charge up the wing, and received one of the biggest cheers of the day to round off an afternoon of relief and joy for everyone concerned with the Tanadice Club. United in the SPL next year, how does that sound to you? It sounds very pleasing so far. Uh, it's obviously been very hard over the last five or six months uh, for the team. A lot of pressure to hand on. All credit to the younger players as well. They've come in and they've done a real job. And credit to the older ones as well and the whole backroom staff as well. It's been a, a very much team effort. And we have to, uh, I'd imagine the manager will go out and maybe strengthen the team again in the summer. But just delighted to be in the league for next season. We have a young team and we have a lot of good young players coming through. And it's so important for us. We, well, the club is geared to be an SPL club. And I just don't talk about the playing side of it. I'm talking about the whole staffing of the club and the corporate side of it as well. It's all created for Premier League. And that was a big responsibility, to keep Dundee United in the league, turn the ship round and, and then let's see where we can go next year. And I would like to think that where Dundee United, as long as I'm around the place, I'll never ever be in a situation like they've been the last two or three weeks. Sandy, can you believe that one finished 3 2 for United, being 2 0 up? Yes, yeah, uh, really disappointed, Katrina. The, the game swings completely on Paul Hartley's order and off. 
uh, which is simply not acceptable. Paul's, I didn't even know he'd been booked in the first half, uh, but apparently he got booked for gesturing to the crowd after he scored. And that's just not acceptable. That's, uh, and Paul will be punished heavily for that. Do you have a little bit of sympathy for Tom Henry and Simon at the moment? Very much so. I mean, uh, they, they've been quite uh, wonderful this last few weeks, although I couldn't say it. I mean, we couldn't shake them off. They were there behind us. They, were, they looked as if they were out here. Then they were back in it again. Last week they were 2-0 up here, looking as if they were going to overtake us. Then they were clawed back. And today they're 2-1 up against Aberdeen, who's been doing very well. Only to find that uh, we managed to win the game. So it's a bit heartbreaking for them. I have a lot of friends at St Mirren. And I uh, feel for all the supporters I do. I'll bet he does. Katrina Harvey at McDermott Park. Andy Walker with me here in the studio. Andy, it was one of those days of just high drama, wasn't it? Oh, it was quite extraordinary listening to all the events coming in yesterday on the radio. And it was it was just seesawing from one side to the other. But uh, I just feel as though there should be room for both teams in the SPL, Jim. I feel as though St Mirren have come to grips with the SPL now, especially in the last half of the season. Mm -hmm. And I think a 16-team league. They would go on and progress and maybe produce one or two good young players. Yeah, let's have a look at the bottom of the table, which means that St Mirren are relegated. Arithmetically, actually, they can stay up, but the, it's uh, someone has to lose 7-0 and someone has to yeah. win 7-0, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, as you say, Andy, they came good in the second half of the season, and Tom Henry pointed out in that interview with me yesterday, they've only lost one of their last eight, and that was to Celtic, the day Celtic won the championship. Well, that's a good run of form, and Dundee United as well, I think, since the turn of the year. They must be in the top three of the whole division in terms of form, so... I think they're both a credit to the SPL. It's just a pity that one of them has to go. A turning point up at the uh, match at McDermott Park yesterday was Paul Hartley's red card. Now, it was, it was two yellows. The first one was for... Uh, well, this is, this is the second bookable yeah, thing. Yeah, he's already been booked in here. I just think Paul has gone in a bit high there. And, mm. uh, you know, I always have a laugh at him having his high heels on. I think he's got them on there and he's, he's just tried to give uh, Charlie a wee kick. But I think the booking to get... Uh, after celebrating, celebrating a goal, the goal, it's just a piece of nonsense. I mean, that's mm. what the game's all about, but uh, he's not the only one to have suffered for that this well, season. Let's have a look at the Dundee United goals. It was a magnificent comeback, but basically their careers were on the line, weren't they? Yeah, fighting for their lives. Uh, <coughs> don't know what Alan Main was doing here. That's uh, so unlike him. He's usually very assured, but the finish is a good one and it gets them right back into the game at a vital time. And Craig Easton with a second one. Again, a brave header. Yeah, I think uh, you're looking for uh, either the goalkeeper to come there or certainly someone to follow Craig Easton's run, but credit to him, he showed a lot of desire to get in where it hurts in the six-yard box. And Derek Lilly, as Katrina said, he'll never score a more vital goal. Yeah, he's been a terrific signing for United. Alec uh, has done well to bring him back to Scotland and I don't think he'll score a more vital goal in his career, but... I think uh, United, there's no way they'll be struggling as badly next season as they yeah. were this. Because Derek Lilly is one of several players that Alex Smith has brought in and they have gelled into a very smart unit, haven't they? Yeah, he's turned it around uh, good style. And I, I like Thompson, uh, Jamie McConney, Craig Easton. They're all getting better and I think they'll be a force to be reckoned with next season. So they could be actually be up there challenging possibly for a place in Europe, Andy, if things continue to progress. Well, you look at Hearts and Kilmarnock just now, and they've been consistent this season. I don't, uh, you know, since the turn of the year, United have been the form side out with the old firm. So there's no reason to, to suggest why they won't go on and challenge for a European place. I think they've got the players. What about St Mirren then? Can they bounce back? I mean, you said there should be room for them at the moment, but sadly there isn't. Yeah. Um, can they bounce back? They're in there against Air United, up and coming, Inverness perhaps, Partick Thistle even. Well, this is it. Uh, there's no real logic to football anymore. And uh, I just feel as though St Mirren have changed their style. They've come to grips with the SPL, albeit too late. But I think when they go down to the first division, they'll get back to the style that brought them up. They'll start to play a good passing game. They've got the players that are capable of that. You'll just maybe need to introduce one or two more, but certainly they'll challenge Air United and Inverness for, for the title next season. It should be an excellent first division. Okay, Andy, for the moment, 